we've got one of the my favorite services scheduled for today. I always have enjoyed when we've had three, to, <clears throat> three or five different guys get up and share a principle on whatever the subject may be. Today happens to be Father's Day, and so uh, they're going to share a principle that God put on their heart uh, about being a dad or, or about fathers. And um, we've got three amazing dads that are going to get up. I'm not one of them. Uh, I'm going to let them do the speaking today. And so one of our speakers is our worship leader, Jordan Langham. Jordan, come on up this morning. Let me tell you, Jordan has, Jordan has four kids. He had, his first, he had his first kid when he was 21, and um, he has been a busy dad. But I've watched him over the years. He's been with us now for uh, about 15, 16 years here at Destiny. And um, I've watched him be a dad, and he is a very involved dad. And um, you're a great dad, by the way. And what you have to share today is going to be... Uh, amazing. Uh, this next guy, um, he's got three teenagers, or actually uh, a little older than three teenagers, uh, three kids. Butch Cable, come on up this morning. Uh, Butch, I know you got some good stuff inside you about raising your kids, because your kids have all grown up amazing, all three of them. And now your youngest is a probably 16 or 16? 17, 17, and um, getting into those teen years can be a challenging season, and um, one thing I love about this guy is get around him, and he just speaks life and encouragement into anybody that's around him, uh, including his kids. It just, it just comes out all the time. The last one is my son, Tyler. And I want Tyler to come on up this morning. He's, he's got three amazing kids. He really does. Not just because they're my grandkids, but, um, but they, really are, they really are good kids. And, um, uh, and yet, I know that there's been... I've watched Tyler um, over these last uh, 10 years. And, and T Ryland's 10, and, and Jack is 4. And then Braylon, six, uh, eight, six, six. And um, he's a very, very patient dad. A very patient dad. And um, that's a great trait. That's a great trait to have. And, um, and so all of you got something I know you got in your heart to share. And so let's start off with Jordan. Give Jordan a big hand this morning. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, quick, quick background on me. I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, my granddad worked for Santa Fe Railroad, and uh, they moved around a lot, but everywhere that they moved, he was a bivocational pastor there. So that was pretty cool. Um, in the late 80s, my uncle founded a Baptist church in Kansas, uh, and then when my family moved out to Kansas, my dad became the worship leader there. Um, so it was pastors and, and leadership in, in church has, has just been a part of my world since forever. Um, I learned to play the bass guitar when I was nine because they needed a bass player. That's how it works. You start, you, you have to breed, breed your own worship team sometimes. Uh, so when I was nine, I was, I was playing the bass. Uh, and then when I was 13, I started leading worship for our youth, our youth worship team. Uh, my dad taught me how to play different instruments, how to lead the congregation into the presence of God. And um, growing up, my dad showed us a good balance of, of faith and family, and fun. Um, he was very involved in our lives. Uh, we were always home, it seems like, together as a family. And I remember after dinner, he would read Bible stories out of this really cool picture, picture Bible. Um, and he always told the most hilarious stories from his childhood. Um, I don't know how he remembered them, but I remember when he'd tell the stories, I'm thinking, I've got to, I've got to remember stuff to tell my kids because it's, it's just so enjoyable, right? I just loved every story. Uh, that he would tell. He would, he would take any situation, like a normal situation, and bring so much laughter to it. Um, uh, he would laugh at us all the time. <laughs> uh, like, my siblings and I thought we were the funniest people we knew that sort of laughed at us. 
Um, at the same time, we were at church all the time, every church service, every church function, every church event. Uh, I remember going to church families' homes, having families over to our house. Um, every Sunday after church, a large group of us would go to Godfather's for their pizza buffet, which we all loved until my brother and I found out we were allergic to cheese. We still went to Godfather's. So my brother and I enjoyed cheeseless pizzas. Cheeseless pizzas. That was a side note. I, that's not in my notes. Uh, I, learned, I learned a lot of things from my dad. I learned about priorities. I learned about respect. I learned about Jesus. Uh, and all that brings me to this morning. Um, I want to I just bring this all to one verse. Maybe you've heard it before. This is Joshua 24, 15. It says, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. I know you've actually heard that before, um, but I, I do want to look at this verse practically. Um, let's dissect it a little bit. Uh, what is Joshua actually saying here? Let's look at the, the verse before it. So starting in verse 14, Joshua 24, 14 says, so fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Okay, stop right there. We see this phrase a lot in scripture, right? It says, fear the Lord. Uh, but what does that, <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, this, this isn't necessarily a um, be afraid of an angry God type of fear, right? In fact, there are 365 verses in the Bible that say, fear not, 365. Uh, that's one for every day of the year, in case you didn't put that together. And if you're struggling with fear <laughs> or anxiety, do a quick search and start reading these verses every day, right? Uh, but when we fear God, we are appreciating his character. Fearing the Lord means to give him complete reverence. Uh, it means to honor him as the God of great glory, majesty, purity, and power. It's also recognizing that God is a God of love. He is merciful. He is forgiving. But he's also holy, just, and righteous, which means he is the judge of sin. So to fear God also then involves recognizing that he is angry about sin, <laughs> And he has the power to punish those who stand arrogantly against him and break his laws. So that can look a little bit like being afraid of an angry God, right? Uh, but that's a healthy fear. I'm going to call that a healthy fear. It's supposed to keep us in line, right? It's the same type of health, healthy fear that keeps you from jumping into a bonfire or off a cliff or something, right? This is a, a healthy type of fear. Um, and it's like the first level of intimacy, in this relationship with God. The goal isn't that you don't sin as a, I'm sorry, the goal is that you don't sin as a response to his love, right? You wouldn't want to do something that hurts someone you love. So not doing something out of a healthy fear is fine, but that's kind of not the goal. That's, that's the starting line. Does that make sense? Fearing God is appreciating his character, giving him honor, recognizing he is loving, merciful, and forgiving, but he's also one who judges sin. Okay, Joshua 24, 14, let's go back. So fear the Lord, serve him wholeheartedly. Okay, how do you serve him wholeheartedly? It means to follow him in all that we are, in all that we do, in all that we say, and to do this wherever we are and under every circumstances uh, completely. It's more than just giving him all that we have, it's yielding to him all that we are. God wants our gifts, he wants our talents, but most of all, he wants us, and that's serving wholeheartedly. Okay, let me actually read this whole thing. Joshua 24, 14, and 15. So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. Verse 15. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or would it be the gods of the Amorites who, whose land you live in now? Uh, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Okay, so what's his point? His point is that you will always be serving someone or something. And in those days, there were apparently a lot of gods to choose from, <laughs> right? The, with different religions and, and different things. Yeah, that's true. There's, there really are still today. In Western culture, though, I feel like our gods look different. All right, maybe instead of who will you serve, uh, it should be, what will you prioritize, right? Or what will you put first? Or what do you care about the most? Uh, or, or what do you spend the most of your time focusing on and thinking on? Maybe, maybe for you it's, it's money, 
right? Maybe you serve money. It doesn't matter if you have money or you're broke. Many people trust in money more than they trust in God, right? Maybe you serve uh, your identity, right? Maybe it's your social media following or your position at work. Maybe you care the most about entertainment. You prioritize Netflix <laughs> or video games over anything else. Maybe you care the most about being comfortable. We don't have to talk a lot about that one, but we have made our lives much easier and much more comfortable than in any other time in history. I'm not saying that's bad, but if you prioritize your comfortability, right? Maybe it's one of those things, uh, and it's not a, a God in the religious sense of the word, but you will always serve someone or you will serve something. So who will you serve is the question. And he answers by saying, as for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Matthew 6, As for me and my family, we're going to pray together more. More than just for our food at dinner time. As for me and my family, we're going to serve the community once a month, right? A soup kitchen or a homeless shelter or feed my starving children or something. As for me and my family, we're going to make church a priority. You know, it amazes me every Sunday morning um, how many golfers are out at 7 a.m. There's a golf course right next to you here, and, and every Sunday, can, like no judgment, I don't mind them golfing, but can you imagine how much grief we, no, can you imagine how many would actually come to a 7 a.m. church service? That's not that funny to you, because you'd be sleeping, you know you would be sleeping. As for me and my family, we're going to make church a priority, praise God, for a 10 o'clock service. As for me and my family, we're going to talk about Jesus once a day. Uh, we're going to start believing for God to move in this area or with this family member. And we're going to believe together. And as a father, I'm going to be the one to make it happen. First, I'm going to cast the vision to my wife. Then when I ask my kids if there's something I can pray for them about or I begin to declare healing over them or I start walking around the house pleading the blood of Jesus, my wife doesn't fall out of her chair but instead, she agrees and supports including Christ into our daily lives, right? Your kids deserve that. Your kids need to see God moving in your family more. Speaking in tongues shouldn't be weird for your kids. Uh, we were praying as a family, this was like a month or so ago, and we had this list on the wall, and all six of us just were praying over this list out loud at the same time. And during the prayer uh, time, I just, I just felt like I should just pray in the Spirit and... Um, well, no, 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 this is not good. <laughs> Actually, that, that was good. That was a good choice. But the next night, the next night, uh, we were doing the same type of thing, and my youngest says, um, Dad, uh, this time could you not pray in that Hebrew language? <laughs> Which was cute, and that is, that is funny, but it's also kind of sad, right? Like, I don't want that to be a, a freaky thing. I want that to be normal, right? <laughs> uh, so I punished her, of course, uh, for saying that. No. But I think our kids deserve a different kind of normal, right? And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. 2020 was a different kind of normal, and we did not like that so much. And 2020 was, was intense. It was a global pandemic, racial injustice, political upheaval, economic instability. It was relentless. And if you believe in the sovereignty of God, then you have to believe that that was not by accident, right? God allowed that to happen. Okay, why am I talking about the pandemic? <laughs> Let's look at Acts chapter 17, verse 26. And then I'm going to wrap this up. It says, From one man, Adam, he made every man and woman and every race of humanity, and he spread us all over the earth. He sets the boundaries of people and nations, determining their appointed times in history. And another, tra another translation adds this. It says, he commands the separation of the seasons and sets the lifespan of every person. So out of all of time, he decided to pluck you out of eternity and position you in 2020 to go through this pandemic. He gave you specific gifts and talents for the purpose of serving your generation. Church, we are his plan A for the planet in 2020, 2021, 2022. We are plan A. This is not by default. This is by design, right? God decided that of all the people in all of eternity, we were to be the carriers of his presence to this generation. As dads, our kids need to hear that, that they have a purpose. 
God designed for them to be your child (laughs) with the gifts and talents that they have to serve God and to carry the presence of the Holy Spirit to this generation. So dads, let's rise up. Let's own that responsibility and let's stand on Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Hi, everybody. Happy Father's Day. Oh, it's a great day for destiny, isn't it, Pastor Joe? Pastor Vicki, I love it. Father's Day. Man, we've got some great fathers in the house, and I always like to recognize, I love our church family, and I just love watching the fathers. Um, I'm not with them all the time, but you can see it um, just in the church house. And I know Adam and Phil and all you guys, Pastor Tyler, I watch you guys, and Jordan, I watch you guys interact with your kids and how they respond, and it's a wonderful testament of how they're growing up in the Word of God and in the church house. There's a lot of stuff out in the world today, (laughs) but you got to get them into the church house, and I want to go back a little bit to my hero, my dad, uh, back uh, a few years ago. he wasn't a Christian. I didn't grow up in a Christian home, but uh, he, him and my mom were very just incredible parents. And the, the fathers that I saw around me were incredible. My grandparents were incredible. Um, and they were always about the kids and helping the kids and growing and participating in sporting events or whatever was going on and, and family gatherings and... I grew up in an incredible, incredible family atmosphere. Um, moving forward, as, we, as I grew older, um, I moved away and played. You guys all know that I played hockey, um, and I left home at, at a young age, 17, to play hockey in Canada. And there goes my spiritual sh- search. My mom would always, I'd go to uh, VBS and um, a vacation Bible school in the summer. For, an, uh, for a week that they used to have in the 70s, they did that. I don't know if they do, still do that or not now, do they? Yep, okay. So my mom would throw me, ah, oh, you got to learn about God, you know, and I loved it. Uh, but it was one week. And uh, when I came back from Canada, I just went on a, on a hunt for, for Jesus. And um, you guys ever heard of Keith Green, that guy that, that he, he's my worship, I, I, I love Keith Green and I'm always throwing them on. My kids are like, who is this guy, you know? <laughs> Keith Green. He was radical, and I'm kind of radical. And so I, I loved to, I love listening to Keith Green stuff. And uh, it, I wasn't like Keith where he, he searched way. I just searched and found. It was like I went to, to our church, and then God just, I just was praying all the time and seeking God. And, and the Bible says if you seek him with your whole heart, you're going to find him. And that's what happened to me. So uh, moving forward now, um, I meet an incredible girl, Jane. (laughs) And we talked a lot about um, having a family. Sorry. Hopefully you guys took that off the TV. That's, I don't want that online. <laughs> but um, it's kind of different because our kids are at, at the older end of the spectrum, and they're leaving. And it's... it's a tough season. Thanks, Jane. <laughs> oh, okay, so that was unexpected. Sorry, everybody. Um, but um, uh, just I was just reflecting so much, and I I love the season we're in. It's a great season, but it's so much different. 
I, I wear my heart on my sleeve, so I'm sorry. Um, that's just who I am, so. Um, oh, all right, let's go. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, I did play hockey, you guys. <laughs> I'm a tough guy on the ice. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Jeez. Oh, this preaching thing's tough. I sh no wonder I'm not a preacher. Well, anyway, it's a great season that we're in, but I just was reflecting this week and, and praying, and we used to get the kids and throw them in in their uh, PJs, and I said, and Jane said, where are we going? I said, get the kids in PJs. Let's go. Where are we going? I said, we're going to the church parking lot. It's Friday night. Let's pray for the service. We'd get in the car, and we'd go, and Jeez, oh my gosh, it's embarrassing now. And we go and pray, and the kids loved it. Uh, one time there was a big rock in the parking lot, and it was, um... <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, <laughs> big, big rock, and, and uh, I was thinking, I said to Jane, man, the pastor, I don't know if that's in a good spot for the parking lot. And one of the kids says, <laughs> was it Moses? <laughs> he says, Laz says, well, dad can move it. It was about a 10,000 pound rock. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I turned to Jane. I'm like, I like this stage. They think dad can do anything. It was great. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So this message is pretty well destroyed now that I <laughs> embarrassed myself completely. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to get out of the emotion. Let's go to God's word. Okay, so my, my, the subject is God's a great father. And, and I've had great, my dad was a great dad. My grandparents were great dads. I'm a great dad, but God's the great, great father. And he's a great dad. Jeez, Louise, Matthew 7, 11. If you then, being evil, oh, geez, now I need these. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will you, will you, your Father who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Man, you know, we want to be great dads, but God Almighty is the best of the best. Man, he he gives us what we need at the right time and the right season. He gives us comfort. You guys ever wake up? Man, I know you do. You wake up at 3 in the morning with a big anvil on your chest, and you're like, oh, my gosh. You've got a bunch of burdens on you. You wake up and just start praying, and all of a sudden it's gone. It's gone. God delivers you. Who is God? John 10.10. 10. I always like this. this is God's a good God, the devil's a bad devil. Don't get it confused. You know, people say, oh, man, why'd God do that? God didn't do that. That's a devil. God's a good God. The thief comes, to, comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus came to give you life and that you may have life more abundantly. Whole, you guys are born again. God wants to give you abundant life. Abundant life. Then we kick it into grace. What, what does God give us? What, what is a great father, the almighty, the great, am, great I am, what does he do? He gives us grace. By grace through faith, we make Jesus our Lord and Savior. Listen to this. Grace is, it's broken down. It's ability, supernatural power, supernatural favor. You guys realize that we have the favor of God? Do you realize that we have nepotism? Don't you like nepotism? We're his favorite. Oh, people say, oh, ho, ho, you think you're special because you're a Christian? Yeah, I do. You know why? Because God says I am. So I am special. You're not because you're not a Christian. So give your life to the Lord. It's true. It's a word. All right. Here we go. Okay. This one here. Now, Christians, the other thing that we have is We've got the power. We've got the, the Holy Ghost in us. The same spirit raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. Listen, Romans 4, 17. 
you guys, oh, man, life's a bummer. I don't know. Change it. Get off yourself. Make a choice. What do you mean change it? This is all promises for us, okay? So get in the word. What do you need? What is it? Finances, health, joy, friends. What do you need? Oh, man, I need finances. Okay, let's go. Sow a seed. Start. Sow a seed. Well, I don't have any money. Give a dollar. I don't care. Sow a seed. You got to get in the word. Then you understand why. Sow a seed. Now, listen. Then you've got to, Romans, I'm, gonna, I, I'm going off script. Uh, you won't have it up here. Romans 4.17, call those things that aren't as though they are. What does that mean? Use your mouth. Speak it. you got to speak. Get into the word and the promise and say, oh, my gosh. God, I sowed. I'm a tither and I'm a giver. God, you rebuke the devourer from amongst me. No evil should befall me, nor any plague shall come near my dwelling. My family's blessed and highly favored. If God is for me, who can be against me? Everywhere I step, I possess the land. I'm more than conquering Christ Jesus. That's how you rip it up. All right. I'm behind schedule. Um, crying up here like a, like a baby. Oh my gosh. Oh, what an embarrassing day. <laughs> and now it's on TV everywhere, too. That's the worst. <laughs> At least back in the 80s and 90s, you could hide it. It's, now it's everywhere. Jeez. All right. I've got a couple more verses, but we're going to move on. What I w the message I want to get across is God's a good God. God has everything you have need of. He's already done it at the cross. Jesus did it for you. Just get in the word, make a choice, speak it, declare it, sow some seed, and live for God. Man, God loves you guys. God bless you guys. Love you. Oh. Yeah. Come on. That was awesome. At one point, I was going to have my dad throw us a box of Kleenexes for you, but, but you, 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 you held it together. You did a great job. All right. All right, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. It says, For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. You guys realize God wants to produce a harvest of generosity in every single one of you? He wants us to be generous. It says in verse 11, yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. So that you can always be generous. God wants us to be generous. God wants us as believers, we as Christians should be the most generous people. And this is my dad, okay? This is what my dad taught me. My dad was not a handyman growing up, okay? My dad was never able to teach me, you know, how to change a tire or how to, you know, do other handyman things. I think he taught me how to change a light bulb. I think, I think he could teach me that much. <laughs> but honestly, he didn't really own a toolkit. Like, if anything was broken in the house, he just called Jeff, and Jeff would come over and fix it. Because Jeff is handy. Jeff is amazing like that. He can fix anything and everything. But my dad is a farmer. He doesn't look like it, but he's a farmer who knows how to sow seed. He taught me the principle of generosity growing up. This is a principle, one of many principles that my dad taught me. One of them is as, as I was thinking about preaching today and what I was going to teach, and I wanted to teach on something that my dad's taught me. And although I couldn't teach on a, a, a practical a handyman principle that my dad taught me, I could, I could teach on many godly, spiritual, biblical principles that being raised in a pastor's home, being raised under a, a God-fearing man has taught me. And one of those principles was generosity. My dad has taught me to be generous. My dad has taught me the power of a seed sown. My dad is the most generous person I know. Many of you have experienced his generosity firsthand. You guys know of his generosity. But my dad, honestly, is the most generous person. My dad has taught me the power of a seed sown. He taught me that a seed is much more effective when you sow it than when you eat it. 
A seed doesn't do you much good when you eat it. A seed will give you a harvest when you sow it. A seed will reap you benefits when you plant it. So I just want to share with you a few truths today about generosity, about being generous people, and what can happen when we choose to be generous. And I'm not just talking, okay, this is not just a tithing message. This isn't a, you know, a give to the church message, although that falls into it. This is just talking about our being generous in our day-to-day lives, just being a generous person, just being generous people in our day-to-day lives. And so I want to talk about right now um, something called the cycle of generosity. If you're taking notes, write this down. This is the cycle of generosity. Here's what it looks like. We give, God provides and multiplies. Our faith then increases because we saw God multiply and increase what we initially gave. So our faith increases and then we give some more. That's the cycle of generosity. We give, we're generous, we sow a seed into somebody's life. God provides for what we gave, like we might have given what we had planned to spend on lunch, but instead we sowed it to somebody else's life. God miraculously provides somebody else buying us lunch, and our faith increases, and then we're like, hey, I can keep being generous. I can keep giving because I realize that when I give, when I'm generous, God still provides for me. God multiplies it, and I want to be generous again. This is the cycle of generosity. When we give and we share generously, God provides generously. I'll say it again, when we give generously, God provides generously. 2 Corinthians, again, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, but look at a couple verses before verse 10, what we just read. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 and 9 says, God will generously provide all you need. Notice this isn't lack. This isn't scarcity. This is provision. It says, then you will always have everything you need. Then you'll always have everything you need and plenty left over to what? Share with others. This is the cycle of generosity. This is what God's called us to do, is to be generous. And when we're generous, you'll have everything you need and plenty left over, not to hoard to yourself, not so you can just have more, but so that we can continue to share with others and continue to be blessing. As the scriptures say, they share freely, they're generous, they give generously to the poor, and their good deeds will be remembered forever. This is what we do as a local church, as a local ministry. Uh, we are generous. Now, we don't always talk about it, okay? I, wanna, I, I, I don't want to sound boastful, but, but there's a lot that we do as a ministry that a lot of people don't know about, and it's because we're not trying to like, hey, look at us, look what we did for these people. But we have had people... Um, ask like, hey, what have we done for for those in need, even in our church? What have we done for some local outreaches? And so let me just be be transparent. And again, I don't say this to boast, but I rather want to share with you the and testify of the goodness and faithfulness of God. As a church, we have actually given away multiple vehicles to people. There's a few individuals in our church that have received a car that was donated to our church, and we generously were able to provide for families who needed a a good, reliable vehicle. Uh, We've paid people's mortgages. We've made people's help with people's car payments. We've helped with people's bills that they needed help with. And this is the cycle of generosity. We give, God provides and multiplies, and our faith increases, and we give some more. And we're able to do this because of your generosity. We're able to generously provide for other people's needs in the community and within the church because of your generosity, because of your giving. We're able to do things like this. I want you to write this down. A seed doesn't produce a harvest when you consume it, only when you sow it. A seed doesn't produce a harvest when you eat it, when you consume it. A seed only produces a harvest when you sow it. We give, we sow, we're generous, God multiplies it. Generosity breaks the cycle of scarcity and creates a cycle of abundance. That's what generosity does. When we're generous with people in our day-to-day lives, when we're generous in our workplace, when we're generous with our kids, when we're generous with our friends and with our family, God provides. It creates a cycle of abundance. Generosity is then the antidote to greed and selfishness. Now, we know that being greedy is a sin. We know that selfishness is a sin, okay? Greed is what breaks that over our lives. If you don't want to be greedy, 
Give generously. If you don't want to be selfish, if you don't want to be a selfish person, give sacrificially. Give when you don't feel like it. It breaks, it is the antidote. Generosity is the antidote to greed and selfishness. Generosity builds our faith. These are just a few things that generosity does in our life. Generosity builds our faith. We see the faithfulness and blessings of God in our life when we're generous. So it builds our faith. It's the cycle of generosity. It makes no sense in the natural. It will never make sense on paper because it is supernatural. Give and it will be given back to you is what the Bible says. It goes against natural logic. That, okay, if, you, if you're going to give, you're going to have less. You have this much. If you give 10%, you're going to be left with 90%. But that's not what actually happens. If you hold on to your 100%, that's all you will ever have. But when you give the 10%, you're not just left with 90%. You're left with an abundance that God provides for your life. And God multiplies that 10% or whatever it is in your, in your life that you're sowing. Those seeds that you sow in your day-to-day lives. Again, yes, tithing is part of it. Yes, giving in your church is a part of it. But that's not what this message is about. Again, I'm talking about just being generous in, in our day-to-day, day-to-day lives. Just be a generous person. Just be generous with those around you. Because when you are generous, when you sow seed, this is what I saw my dad do growing up. My dad was always generous with those around him. And I saw it. And I saw the blessings of God come in. Even when he, would, when he would give, I saw it come back in our lives. Generosity breaks the cycle of greed and selfishness. Generosity builds our faith. It's supernatural. We give, God multiplies, our faith grows, and we give some more. I want to close with this scripture, Proverbs 11, Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. It says, one person gives freely, and yet it goes against natural logic, gains even more. One person gives freely, and yet he gains even more. Another withholds, withholds unduly. He keeps all that he has. This is mine. This is what I've been given. I hang on to it, but he comes to poverty. This is what happens when you're not generous. This is what happens when you're greedy. This is what happens when you're selfish. It leads to poverty. But generosity leads to abundance. Verse 25, a generous person will prosper. How many of you all want to prosper? Come on. Be a generous person. It's what Proverbs teaches. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others. Okay, whoever refreshes others, gives to those who are in need, refreshes others, is a generous person with others, will be refreshed. So dad, thank you for teaching me the principle of generosity. Happy Father's Day to you, Dad. Thank you for teaching me the principle of generosity. And I just want to pray real quick over all of you, heads bowed, eyes closed. God, I thank you for being a generous God. I thank you that we serve a loving, merciful, graceful, generous God. I pray that we will live generously in our daily lives. God, give us opportunities to sow seeds into the lives of people where it will be a blessing and produce a harvest. I pray that we will remember that a seed sown is far more effective than a, and, and productive than a seed consumed. God, let us not be consumers, but let us be generous sowers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. That was good. That was great. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Powerful. And God is a good father. And I love it when you cry. I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Coach Butch. That's great. I love it. And thanks, bud. That's you can never, you can really never be too generous. It's something that we can all learn uh, in life. And uh, you guys shared some great, great principles. We want to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. If you want to make that choice and have that assurance that you're saved and going to heaven, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, 
to be the perfect and final sacrifice for all of my sins. Today I choose to live for you. Forgive me of my sins. Make me righteous. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, we'd love to send you a free gift all about your choice to follow Jesus. Simply email us at the link below with your email address. It's time now to give in our tithes and offerings. We want to thank you for your continued faithfulness in your giving. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10 that God provides seed to the sower. Keep sowing that seed and God will keep providing seed to sow. There are four ways that you can give. You can give online through our website. You can give through texting on your phone. You can give through our Destiny app and set it up to be automated. And you can give by mail. Thanks again for your generosity. We pray that God bless it and multiply it. In Jesus' name, amen.